We are going to be watching for some showers and storms today, watching that cluster track right along that old boundary right there across uh, stretches right into to north central Florida. Through the day, there'll be more showers returning to across portions of Alabama into Georgia by later tonight. And all of these have the chance for some thunderstorms, although we will not see the big widespread severe weather threat that we saw yesterday. We have a risk of it right here along the Gulf Coast state. the crap out of me. It's going to turn white like Dublin. I'm Matt Sampson here with our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes. Dr. Forbes, traditionally uh, during the season, we think of Tornado Alley as the place folks really need to watch out. But this uh, graphic here shows a different picture. Yeah, traditionally Tornado Alley we've thought of in, in the central U.S., but that's an area where because of the wide open plains, you can see the tornadoes. It's got that reputation. But in terms of Tornado frequency really anywhere from the front range of the Rockies to the east coast has the chance for quite a few tornadoes. Especially in recent years, we've become aware that really the main tornado alley in terms of danger and fatalities, injuries, have, has come from uh, Oklahoma and eastern parts of Texas over across the Gulf Coast states. Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama really have a lot of tornadoes and a lot of killer tornadoes. So I know we've had a lot of severe weather over the last couple of days. You know, it's been a, a pretty decent chunk of the country that's experienced it. Well, you know, the storm that's partly responsible for creating some of that severe weather actually takes on another phase into the end of the week and the weekend. Now, if this was winter, we'd be looking at this storm going up the East Coast thinking, oh man, this is gonna be a snowmaker. Well, we're not worried about snow this time. It's late enough in the season, this is just gonna be rain, but it'll bring a lot of wind. If it takes more of a northerly track, you're gonna feel a lot more effects. If it goes out to sea, probably not as many. Uh, uh, still some questions with this forecast. We'll keep you updated over the next few days. What you just saw were a few of the recent clips posted by the Weather Channel and their lackluster attempts to explain this unnatural weather. Before we get into the footage of what was actually happening, I'd like to examine these few clips in greater detail. Beginning with the first clip of the generic weather woman, the first thing you'll notice is that the map given is not of actual radar or satellite footage. It's production-based graphics designed to look somewhat like actual radar or satellite footage. They don't show any of the actual cloud cover, and you'll also notice that this weather person doesn't mention the spotty damaging winds and spotty hail warnings that flash for all about two seconds in the upper right hand corner. And take a look at the color they chose for the text, black and white, small print. Moving on to the next clip, we see footage of the hail which plagued Stephenville, Texas on the 26th. It's amateur footage captured with a cell phone but it's enough to demonstrate the reality of these engineered storms. The child admits to being frightened, and as fear is based in the unknown, perhaps if they knew how and why the sudden spotty hail came out of seemingly nowhere, they wouldn't be as scared. This next clip is pretty hilarious. First, we are introduced to our resident weather expert by this flaming douchebag, Samson. What we see next is the funny part. Here is the new and improved Tornado Alley map. Turns out, they have expanded that alley into what looks like a sprawl. And again, this is an expert trying to pass this off to us as science. He then says that the Tornado Alley got its name because... Yeah, traditionally Tornado Alley we've thought of in, in the central U.S., but that's an area where, because of the wide open plains, you can see the tornadoes. It's got that reputation, but... That's completely stupid and bereft of any logic. It has nothing to do with the land being flat and people being able to see them coming. No critically thinking human would accept this as a legitimate response as to where the name came from. The reality is, the area got the name when in 1952, a research project titled Tornado Alley set out to study severe weather in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. 
The project was headed up by the United States Air Force and managed by United States Air Force meteorologists Ernest Fallbush and Robert Miller. The truth is that tornadoes form in unusually violent thunderstorms, where there is sufficient instability in wind shear present in the lower atmosphere. What this means is that when there are unusually warm and humid conditions in the lower atmosphere and cooler than usual conditions in the upper atmosphere, it produces instability in the weather system. This produces wind shear or the rapid change in wind direction, speed, and height. These kinds of wind shears usually appear ahead of a cold front and low pressure system. A cold front is the leading edge of a cooler mass of air, replacing at ground level a warmer mass of air that is in a defined area of a low pressure system, which is a region in which the atmospheric pressure or the weight of the air is lower than that of the surrounding locations. In short, tornadoes form as a result of a lot of cold air displacing in a short amount of time the warmer air that's present at ground level. The reason that Tornado Alley has so many tornadoes is due to the fact that it is in a unique location geographically. Natural warm humid air used to drift in from the Gulf. Couple this with the dry air from the arid deserts of Texas and Mexico, these atmospheric conditions meet with cold dry air coming down from the north. These natural currents used to be the cause of the natural tornadoes, hence the name Tornado Alley. However, we haven't had natural weather for a very long time. So don't expect any records prior to say maybe the late 1800s and earlier to be accurate or truthful. So in this clip, if you listen really, really hard, you'll hear that he isn't actually saying anything at all. Experienced it. Well, you know, the storm that's partly responsible for creating some of that severe weather actually takes on another phase into the end of the week and the weekend. Now, if this was winter, we'd be looking at this storm going up the East Coast thinking, oh man, this is going to be a snowmaker. Well, we're not worried about snow this time. It's late enough in the season, this is just going to be rain, but it'll bring a lot of wind. If it takes more of a northerly track, you're going to feel a lot more effects. If it goes out to sea, probably not as many. Uh, still some questions with this forecast. We'll keep you updated over the next few days. What news did you actually receive in those few sentences? None. What you are fed is a stupid map with a dumb graphic of a low pressure system, and then what is obvious to anyone with half a brain, the possibilities that the storm could go up the east coast or out to sea. You know, I like that he finishes with, still a lot of questions. Yeah, I agree. Like how is it that you still have a job? Now. If you relied on these sorry excuses for meteorologists for your understanding of the weather, you'll be as ignorant as they are. And I believe this is why most people erroneously believe this weather is natural. The final clip is of some of the spotty damaging winds that Bimbo from the beginning was ignoring. These are the winds that hit Louisiana. I wanted to show you these clips as I needed to demonstrate the reality of our situation in a graphic manner. The first part of our reality that I needed to make you aware of is that most, if not all, of the sanctioned meteorologists are liars. Anyone with a rudimentary understanding of the weather can tell that it is currently being engineered and has been for a really long time. The second part is that their lies have very real consequences, and the ignorance in which we all live, trusting these people with our safety, is a very real danger. You should not fear that which you do not understand, but instead seek to comprehend it. Bring it into the light, and your fear and uncertainty will vanish. This is what I seek to do, for myself, as well as for any who will listen. In the next set of clips, I'll be showing you a hemispherical view of the south half of North America and the northern half of South America. I selected this because I wanted to show you the difference between natural evaporation that is taking place in the rainforests of Brazil and the unnatural water vapor plumes. In this footage, if you look at the rainforests, you'll notice that the water vapor coming from it is dispersed and fragmented, and not very cold. Whereas closer to the coastlines, where the power plants and cities are located, you see more dense and colder plumes of water vapor rising. You may have also noticed that southwest of Mexico, there seems to be a lot of evaporation taking place. Water vapor seemingly spills forth from the same locations. In this close-up, you can see it more clearly. Something out there at sea is producing large amounts of water vapor, and it's concentrated. Here we're back stateside, 
and this footage is of the 27th through the 28th. Take a look at the steady stream of super cold water vapor that drifts through the gulf. What could possibly be producing that much water out at sea? You'll notice how it tapers at the point where it's being produced with the coldest part of the water vapor being produced in the center. I can only speculate as to what is producing this. But try to think of something natural that can produce that much water vapor at that temperature. It's certainly not the sun. Also, take a look at the storm right above Texas. Notice how the power plants there are fueling it. In this clip, we see the United States for the 28th through the 29th. Throughout the Gulf, near the western side of Florida, you can see plumes billowing out, and again, the water is very cold, like what we see after a large amount of steam has been dumped into the atmosphere. 